Reese with the Door Her Beauty and a Bodish Wax brand. In this video, I want to do a tutorial to show you how to use a Bodish Wax for your hirsutism facial waxing. So we're gonna go through everything step by step. So are you ready to get started? Before we do, be sure to click the subscribe button so that you can help this video get more reach and so that you don't miss when great tutorials and videos like this are coming to you. So let's say that you just purchased your fresh bag of Abolish Wax and you are ready to begin your at-home wax experience. Well, there are a few tools and things that you are going to need to, to complete your waxing experience. So let's go over those supplies and tools now. Of course, the very first thing you're going to need is your Abolish Wax. So make sure that you have a body wax or wax of your choice to begin. The next thing that you're going to need at home is your wax warmer. Now it's best that your wax warmer is temperature controlled so that you can be in control of how warm or cool your wax is. The next thing you're going to need for your at home wax experience is your wax sticks. These are your wax applicators that you use to apply the wax to your skin. You're going to need a pair of vinyl or latex free gloves. You're also going to need some gauze and you want to use at least two for your session for cleansing, drying and applying your finishing products. And you're also going to need your pre and post prep products. So what does that entail? A cleanser that is safe for your skin type, a waxing cooling gel that is going to help cool the skin and help with redness. You're also going to need an oil of your choice. This is a combination of grapeseed oil and almond. For this particular video, we're going to be waxing our chin. I like to call this the hirsutism area. It's kind of like the chin and it goes about right here to the tip of the jawline and down a little bit to the neck. We're going to be waxing this area. Another thing that you're also going to need is a mirror so that you can see up close exactly what you're doing. Now, if you're in your room or you have a vanity or you're in the bathroom and you're able to stand and look into the mirror as you do it, that's awesome and actually preferable. Somewhere where you can sit and relax and be comfortable and have a full mirror that you don't have to hold while you're doing your waxing. But because I am filming a tutorial and I'm in my studio, I don't have a mirror that is already mounted. So I'm gonna be doing my hand mirror. So I'm gonna also be showing you how to wax with one hand. <laughs> and so this is kind of like a double tutorial. So let's get right into it. Of course, you wanna always start with clean hands. And even if you're waxing yourself, you want to wear gloves because you just want to be safe. When you are doing a waxing, you're also removing a layer of dead skin in addition to the hair, which means your new fresh skin is now exposed. And wearing gloves just help keep that skin fresh and free from environmental things that may cause infection or disruption. So now I have my gloves on and I am almost ready to begin my waxing session. What do you want to do first before beginning your wax session when you are an untrained professional doing waxing yourself at home? So do you want to jump right into your wax session or do you want to do a patch test? If you said patch test, you are correct. And that is what we're going to do right now. So the purpose of a patch test is just pretty much testing the temperature and to see if there is any type of reaction that will occur. For the sake of this video, we're going to be testing for temperature because if you're doing a patch test, you want to do it at least 24 hours before you actually use the wax on a larger area. So during this time, we're going to do a slight temperature check. How do you do that? You take your stick, you get a little wax on your applicator and you take and test it on your skin like so. And if the temperature feels nice and warm, and safe, it's not burning, it's not hot, and it's not uncomfortable, then this is a good temperature to apply to a much larger area. And so that is how you test for the temperature. Now we truly can begin our wax session. If you would like to use your wax applicators in their full size, you are more than welcome to do so. However, I've been trained to break my applicators in half 
which means now I have two times the application power versus just one use and talk. Now you don't want to use one wax applicator for your entire face or whatever you're waxing even if you're using it on your own. You want to be able to use a clean applicator for each application of wax that you're going to be applying for your skin in that particular session. It just helps keep your wax sanitized and free of bacteria and germs. Now there are a few contraindications that you want to be aware of before you begin your wax session. If you are on any blood thinners, any antibiotics, any steroids, or anything that will cause the skin to thin or lift such as acids and exfoliants, you want to wait at least seven days before beginning a waxing session. So just keep that in mind. At Adore Her Beauty, we pop sticks. So I'm just going to pop a couple. So the first step is taking your cleanser, adding a few drops to your gauze, and cleansing the area that you want to wax. So I am going to cleanse all of this area. And I am using the camera as a mirror, but when it comes down to some areas that I really need to see, you'll see me grab my hand mirror. So once you have cleansed that area, you now want to dry that area. Now that your skin has been cleansed and dried, it is now prepared to receive the wax. Keep in mind, some individuals you may see use powder and you also can use oil as a skin barrier. So if your skin is really soft and sensitive, you may need something to use as a barrier between the wax and your skin. However, I do not use any barriers between wax and I want to actually remove any dead skin. So unless your skin is very sensitive or very, very soft, you may need to use a barrier. Okay, so I usually start off at the tip of my chin and what you want to do is figure out the way your hair is growing. How can you do that? Well, there are several ways. First, you can look and see. You'll notice that the hair will lay in one uniform direction. That is the way it is growing. And so you would apply the wax the way it grows and remove it against the way it grows. If your hair is kind of growing in a cross hatch direction is what I call it, where you got some hairs growing up that way and some hairs growing in the opposite direction, you may need to wax in both directions. So you just generally pick with a position that's going from your chin towards your ear way. This side, your chin toward your ear. And then if it's growing in the opposite direction, you come from your ear and wax towards your chin. So my hair actually grows from chin toward ear and then on this side for some reason it grows from lip down to neck <laughs> and so I have to wax it in those directions. So that is what we're going to do. So when you're new, you don't want to load your wax applicator with too much wax because you're going to need to know how to control it. So if you're talking or you're busy or you're doing something, you want to keep twirling your stick. That keeps the wax from dripping and getting ready to fall. So as it's falling, as you can see here, if you just give it a twirl, it twirls back on and it catches on back to the wax applicator. And so, especially when the wax is extra runny and you do a good dip and you can't catch it. So when the wax is runny and you can't catch it fast enough, just do a nice twirl with your stick and it'll catch the excess. You also can slide excess off the back of the stick by just gliding it across the top of your warmer. So now we're gonna do our application. And so you want to apply and take your stick and glide and push the wax into the skin and also move it along the area to be waxed. And I didn't do a lip, but we'll talk about a lip um, for the sake of me trying to stay in frame and apply it. You will feel the wax begin to tighten as it's kind of shrink wrapping around the hair. And once you touch the wax and your finger no longer gets stuck, it is ready. So you can either take your you can take your stick and catch on and create a lip and pull and add pressure. 
or if you create a lip, you just flick with your finger, pull, and pressure. So I don't have that much hair, but here is some of what I do have. Okay, and then you want to discard that stick and the wax. So now I'm gonna to go to the next section of my chin, which is from chin, tip of the chin, and down to the neck, because that is the way that it grows. If you need to do smaller sections, please do so and take your time. There's no need to rush. So we're gonna catch from chin, tip of the chin, downward to the neck for me. And again, you want to press into the skin. Okay, do your lift, lift or lip, depends on what you wanna say, and pull pressure. This is what I have. You want to discard your stick and the wax. And you just repeat this process, following the way the hair grows, applying your wax with the growth. So creating a lip is just taking your wax stick, curling it around, and a pile of wax will sit at the bottom. And that is how you create a lip. Lift and remove and apply pressure. And it's not that the wax isn't getting anything, it's just I don't have that many hairs. If you feel your skin and you still feel a little prickly, like I like to call them prickly. If you feel a little prickly, you can do a technique called reverse lay. That is where you apply the wax in the opposite direction to get those little stubborn left behind hairs. If your hair grows in a cross hatch direction, you would do the reverse lay technique as well. Reverse lay means you're just going against the way the hairs normally grow. Do a lift and pull and remove. And as you can see, it got some of those stubborn hairs that were left. Toss your wax and your wax stick. Now we're coming up to the center of my chin. And so I apply the wax at the tip of the chin, press it into the skin, and pulling down. Now, I didn't apply that really, really good. It's kind of thin over here, so what you do if your wax, if your strip is applied too thin, you can go back and add more wax and just cover the area up where it's kind of thin and it looks like it will snap and break. Okay. If the wax on your wax applicator is still warm, you can use it to pluck off any stuck on pieces of wax. So you do your lift, pull, pull, and pressure. Toss your wax stick and your wax. Now over here, on my, for me, the hair grows downward. So I have to apply it in that same direction. Flip. If this happens, you just connect the wax to wax and pull. Sticky side to sticky side is how you remove stubborn wax or stuck on wax. 
Okay, with a little more hairs on that side. Toss your wax stick, toss your wax. On the next section. If strings hang like this, you just scoop them around. Or do a nice little twirl. And it'll catch all the stray. <laughs> that'll catch all the stray wax strings. Now what happens again? If the wax is warm on your stick still, a little stick, pluck, it's gone. Toss your wax, toss your wax stick. Last section. See how I caught that? Oh, if you catch it, twirl, 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 twirl. Good, good, good. That's how you do it. If it's warm, it's going to drip. I'm showing you all. I'm showing you. I'm showing you troubleshooting and everything in this tutorial. Because things happen. Wax isn't running. It will run if you and you have to know how to catch it. Do you lift? Pull pressure. Mm -hmm. Toss your wax stick. Toss your wax. My face feels light already. Feels good. And now you can film and kind of inspect if there are some areas you want to do a cross check. If it doesn't feel like super smooth, you can do a cross check. You can do that reverse lay technique in some areas where the hair is maybe shorter or stubborn. So over here is really stubborn. So I kind of will do that reverse lay. And so you want to press into the skin. Like really, really press. And it does get, it's a method to get some stubborn hairs if you feel like your face doesn't feel super clean. If you need to tweeze any certain areas, feel free to do so. Just make sure you don't pinch the skin and that you get the hair out of the follicle fully. So once you are done waxing and you feel comfortable with the results that you have, you want to add a little bit of oil to your gauze and apply it to your skin. This helps to remove wax residue, any stuck on pieces will dissolve. You may need to use a little force, you may need to kind of pick a little. And then you want to follow up with your aloe gel. You can cocktail the two if you like, meaning mix your oil and your gel together. And this is just helps to make the skin feel so soft. It cool, it's like immediately cool upon contact. And it just feels really, really good. It just gives your skin that soft baby feel as well. And that is it. That is it. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. So what do you do once you're completely done? Well, first you don't want to start touching the skin with your bare hands. You don't want to start touching the skin. I know it's going to feel really tempting because it's so nice and smooth and baby bottom smooth. So you don't want to touch, okay? If you do touch, touch with very clean, freshly washed hands. You don't want to start using any exfoliating products for at least 24 hours after your wax because the waxing was an exfoliation. So no need to exfoliate tonight. And you want to make sure you keep the skin um, moisturized, keep it um, high, you know, hydrated, and keep sun protecting on, especially when you're going outdoors, so that your skin doesn't become dark or you know getting any type of pigmentation. And make sure you exfoliate two to three times a week, so that you don't get ingrowns, because the hair is going to grow back. So that is it. I'm pretty sure there's a million other things I can add on, but let's just say this is a pre preliminary tutorial. This is the beginning. This is the introduction. So we will definitely be back to talk about more. Now, if you found that this video was helpful and you actually enjoyed it and you learned something, be sure to leave me a comment below. And again, be sure to subscribe and I will see you in the very next video. Okay, take care and God bless. See you soon. Bye-bye.